In the headlines recently, we've seen a lot about DCG. We've seen a lot about Barry Silbert's grayscale. But we don't see that much mention about Silvergate or ticker symbol SI that trades on the new on the uh, the New York Stock Exchange. Who is Silvergate and why are they getting pulled into this DCG drama? With Bitcoin pumping yesterday, a lot of people sit there and start to think, all right, that's it, 1% pump, we're all happy, okay. But for those of us that have been here a little bit longer, um, we are still seeing um, some of the red flags that are out there. And again, I'm not saying that because of this, Bitcoin's going to crash or something like that. That's completely neither here nor there. What I'm trying to say is, is that there are still elements of surprise that are out there, and I'm not entirely convinced that that the pain is over and we're going to dive into silvergate and i'm going to make that case where i believe that we haven't fit we haven't finished seeing the uh the extent of the issues all right we've got this article out of trust nodes silvergate the bank in the middle of the web sounds enticing it was a tiny local U.S. bank until Barry Silbert, the CEO of the digital currency group, DCG, bought its shares in a private placement in 2018. Since then, Silvergate has quietly grown to become a giant of sorts, handling $160 billion in crypto-related transactions in 2021 and is now publicly traded. 2023, however, their deposits have fallen to 3.8 billion as of December 31st from 11.9 billion, just months prior at the end of September, with 8 billion vanishing in months around the same time as the FTX collapse. The contagion is not over, just my opinion. Just this November, Silvergate stated that Silvergate's total deposits from all digital asset customers totaled 11.9 billion, of which FTX represented less than 10%. That amounts to about 1 billion with Silvergate now under inquiries regarding whether they knowingly transferred FTX customer funds to Alameda. Your bank's involvement in the transfer of FTX customer funds to Alameda reveals what appears to be an egregious failure of your bank's responsibility to monitor for and report suspicious financial activity carried out by its clients. The involvement of Silbert in having a significant stake in this bank may make it relevant in regards to the ongoing Genesis dynamics. DCG made a small equity investment of $250,000 in FTX's Series B in July 2021, DCG held a trading account with FTX with less than 1% of all their trading volume transacted on that platform. Silbert portrays DCG as a kind of venture capital vehicle that sort of has nothing to do with its subsidiaries. It's not really how that works, though. <laughs> It does not therefore clarify what the relationship of their wholly owned subsidiaries may have been with FTX, but it does state, Genesis had a trading and lending relationship with Three Arrows Capital, Suzu, and Three Arrows Capital defaulted on its loans from Genesis. Separately, Three Arrows Capital was an investor in various grayscale products. This, in effect, confirms the accusations of the Winklevi twins that Genesis was reckless in lending to Three Arrows Capital because the latter was pumping GBTC, another DCG wholly owned subsidiary and their main cash cow. Conversations and emails may also add to speculations the DCG and or its subsidiaries colluded with FTX, as Suzu, the founder of the now defunct Three Arrows Hedge Fund, says. FTX and Genesis abused their fiduciary privileges and hatched a multi-pronged coordinated attack on Luna. Yeah, that's it. Including acting interested in and asking to be party to each private bailout attempt for Luna, only to immediately afterward aggressively sabotage any possible recovery plan. FTX returned 2.5 billion of loans to Genesis in August. And Genesis likely knew or should have known these came from FTX depositor funds both via chain analysis and via asking for financial information. That's right. It sounds like people are pleading ignorance. Anyways, 
Although that bank is now publicly traded, it was welcomed to the DCG family in 2018 and therefore raises the question whether on the fiat side, Silbert or others at DCG and Genesis had a clear view of FTXs and Alameda's finances as well as their shenanigans. You know what? I'm just going to come out and say it right away. I think they absolutely knew what the hell was going on. I just think they didn't give a shit. DCG, therefore, does not quite appear at arm's length where it concerns Genesis because of this promissory note, which Silbert even now claims it assumed debts when in fact it has not at present. The Winklevoss twins, however, are not pursuing court proceedings for now, asking instead for a change in management and the resignation of Silbert. Which way investigators may go is even less known, with a federally insured bank now involved in all of this. And that is indeed correct. We went over to take a look at Silvergate.com, and they are a Federal Reserve member bank. So this is, I, I really don't think this is over. And I just want to, I just want to show something else. This is something that I, I think a lot of Bitcoiners are, this is going to go over a, a lot of Bitcoiners heads, especially if you don't come from the traditional finance. So this is a website that I use called Form for Oracle, and it allows you to see insider trading uh, of the stocks. And when I talk about insider trading, I'm talking about insiders that are buying uh, and selling the shares of the companies for which they work for. I, I'm not talking about sketchy, um, malicious insider trading, so to speak. Now, this is the Silvergate Capital uh, Corporation. This is this is essentially their inside roster and the buying and selling and exercising of options, okay, that have gone on, okay? And this goes to show you, it shows you the dates and it shows you the type of activity that occurred, okay? So this starts all the way up at June 13th, 2022, okay? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom, okay? Because this is the end of the year right here. This is November 22nd. Keep in mind what was happening in November, Okay, FTX falling apart, Three Hours Capital falling apart, Voyager falling apart, everything falling apart. And take a look at this right down here at the bottom. Kathleen Freyer, the chief risk officer, who understands risk better than the person whose job it is full time, sold 5% of her holdings at $130 a share. Now, that timeline is important because Silvergate, okay, in the last 52 weeks had a high of around $162 a share, which happened in March of 2022, okay? Actually happened on March 29th. So they waited a bit, could see that it wasn't coming back up and sold off. And of course, I'm just making assumptions as to why this risk officer sold, but I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence in any way, shape or form that this person sold in November as everything was crumbling before anybody started to figure out what Silvergate had to do with this. And I think that using these types of tools is very, very important. Now, okay, do we think that Silvergate has anything really to do with Bitcoin? No, it doesn't. It's just some publicly traded company that, to be perfectly honest, if they go belly up, sure, I I'm, I could imagine that the you know the Bitcoin price temporarily will be impacted from people that are fearful and will want to sell until the you know until the waters are calm again or whatever it is. It's perfectly fine. So, in terms of short term action, it may cause it may cause a slight fluctuation, but in the grand scheme of things, Silvergate doesn't mean shit for Bitcoin. Okay, but. What we should be aware of, Silvergate, FTX, Alameda Research, DCG, Genesis Trading, Gemini, all of these people, all of these entities, they are all intertwined. And I just don't think that the carnage is over yet.